Hey guys, it's uh, Josh. Uh, welcome back to uh, part two. Hopefully you were able to uh, enjoy part one of our, um, our series kind of discussing wind turbines and uh, their eccentricities and uh, their quarks and so forth. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to go ahead and take a look at maybe a method. Uh, I'll make a couple suggestions. Um, recommendations uh, of some modifications that could be made to a wind turbine to allow you to be able to operate it at a more optimum power point. Um, now uh, I'll, I'll mention that uh, my wind turbine is a 48 volt PMA. It's driving a 24 volt battery bank. Well, you know, um, what happens is that allows me to start char charging just a little bit earlier um, than, uh, than if I had a 24 volt permanent magnet alternator. Now, uh, some research that I've done indicates that that obviously is a, a mismatch of um, the power source and the load. And so there's a certain point where maybe my system isn't optimized. Uh, for instance, you know, like I said, I got a 48 volt PMA. It's going to start charging in a lower wind condition than if I had a 12 volt or a 24 volt based PMA. Um, and the voltage quickly increases as the shaft speed. And uh, what I noticed, like I mentioned before, um, the power point of my particular wind turbine with a 48 volt PMA and nine blades is at, let's just say, um, for sake of argument, at about uh, maybe uh, 800 RPM. And let's say at 800 RPM, I'm putting out uh, maybe 75 volts. Okay. Well, I take my wind turbine that's operating at 800 RPM and I connect it to my battery bank, which is 24 volts, and the voltage basically from the wind turbine will go down to around 24 um, volts. Uh, it's basically uh, bootstrapped, it's strapped directly, the wind turbine output and the shaft RPM is strapped directly to the battery bank voltage. And so the RPM of the wind turbine drops to, let's just say, oh, about 25, you know, about 250 RPM. So my maximum point was at 800 RPM. Now it's down at 250 RPM. And I've lost a significant amount of power that I could achieve if I could simply allow the RPM, the shaft, to remain high while still keeping the voltage at a slightly lower level. So, um, anyway, we'll go ahead and go into that. I did a little bit of research on um, three-phase uh, generators, um, and it turns out there's a couple connections, configurations that they are based on. Uh, one, as you can see here, this is called a Y connection. It's in the shape of a Y. It's also known as a star, <coughs> star connection. And basically, you've got three coils, one, two, three. They are all tied at a center central point and then you have three wires coming off of each coil and my particular alternator is set up for a three phase so I took the diodes, the bridge rectifier out of my uh, permanent magnet alternator and I have three wires coming and so when I originally received it pulled out the bridge rectifier and I had three wires just as you see here and this is the internal schematic of the alternator itself well the uh, Y connection, as you see here, and as is a standard connection for an alternator, will give you higher voltage, lower amperage. Now, there is another configuration that you can do with a three-phase system. It is called a delta connection. Now, to use uh, to use a delta connection, well, first let me get you let me give you the benefits or the trade-offs, I should say, for a delta connection. We said that Y connection gives you higher voltage, lower amperage. Well, the delta connection gives you lower voltage and higher amperage. So essentially what that boils down to, let's just say this guy over here is at 100 RPM. Okay, and this thing is giving you 10 volts. And let's just say for to, to put an amperage on there uh, you're getting two amps okay and if you can change from a Y connection to a delta connection 
your RPM will be allowed to go up to 200 RPM. Your voltage will drop 53%, so around, uh, let's see if I can write here, 5.3 volts. Fix that here. 5.3 volts, and your amperage is going to double. So you have the same power production. If you take your 10 volts times the 2 amps, you still have 20 watts. If you take your 5.3 times 4 amps, you're still going to get your same power output. But the major difference is your shaft RPM has gone from 100 RPM to 200 RPM. Now this is a significant point because this can allow you to operate your wind turbine at a point that it'll give you a little better power. So for instance, my particular wind turbine setup is a 48 volt PMA, which allows me to start charging in a lower wind speed than if I had a, four, uh, a 24 volt PMA. Well, if I leave my, con my uh, permanent magnet, 48 volt permanent magnet alternator in a Y connection across the whole range of wind speeds, I may not be able to extract the maximum amount of power. There may come a point where my system is no longer optimized, and that's when switching to a delta connection can help because it allows your shaft RPM to increase to a point where you are extracting the maximum amount of power possible from the wind turbine. So just a few interesting thoughts I might uh, I wanted to share with you guys. I'm in the process of uh, designing and developing a circuit that will allow me to switch um, when I want to between a Y connection and a delta connection. And uh, so th I think that'll, uh, that'll assist me in, uh, in pulling out the maximum potential of uh, wind energy. Um, of en electrical energy that, that's contained in in the uh, in the wind. So uh, anyway, stay tuned. We'll go ahead and have a part three, um, discuss a, a few further aspects of uh, of this. But hopefully, you guys found this useful, and um, you know, uh, stick around. The next part of the video, actually, I will show you a uh, a stator from a permanent magnet alternator and what modifications I did to go ahead and allow me to switch between a Y and a Delta connection. So tune in and I will look forward to uh, uh, getting with you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.